Welcome back everyone. Today we are replacing the Reolink RLC 410W with the 510WA. I mounted the camera on a cheap junction box. You can pick one up at your electronics store for about four or five dollars or so or you can buy one from Reolink what well, costs you a little more. I mount the camera on the junction box so I don't have to drill large holes through my wall. As you can see they're pretty big the connectors here especially the network connector. I'm removing the top of the junction box including the camera. Take it inside and then we just switch the 410 to the 510. The 510 power supply is the same as the 410 power supply so I don't have to rerun the wires. I just disconnect the camera. The mount of the 410 is similar to the mount of the 510. Even the whole pattern are the same. So we just unscrew it and remount the 510 with the same machine screws. To prevent water intrusion on your network connector, you can buy a cap or something where you just uh, do it like I do. I use a RJ45 connector and then put some electrical tape around. After mounting the camera to the junction box, you want to use a little bit of silicone to make sure there goes no water in it. In my case, there goes no water in it because it's on the overhang, but I want to keep the critters out of there. You know, spiders, ants, and all kinds of stuff what's running around here. I don't want them to get into my junction box or under the camera here. Now that this is done, we are going inside, start a real league client on the computer and, and configure the camera. In last week's video, we pre-configured the camera. So the first thing we had to do is create a password. Then we changed our camera name from the default camera one to whatever we like. And we changed the camera to our wireless network. So let's go through the rest of the configuration. So we are open our Reolink client. If you don't have the newest Reolink client, there is a link in the description below. And we can see the new camera front door here. I'm going to check really quick by clicking here on the gear icon if my client is on the latest version. If not, I'm running an upgrade real quick because I don't have automatic updates enabled on that client here. To do this, I click here on about real link. Now here you can see the client version. I click on upgrade. And it's checking for up available updates, so I upgrade here. And I just go with the defaults. Like I said, if you have automatic updates enabled, you don't have to go through this. I just want to make sure we are on the newest version here. So I go to my newly installed front door camera and click on this gear wheel here for settings first it starts here with display and that's all basic stuff flip mirror you know that stuff camera name where you want your camera name date and time where you want it or you can hide all this stuff a watermark it just puts the real link watermark in your image
anti-flicker it's an outside camera i leave it to off day and night i leave it on auto that you can decide if it should record color or black and white here privacy mask you can put a privacy mask in your image you just drag here and it puts a little privacy mask in there in advance you can set up how your picture looks like you can make a brighter contrast and so on exposure I leave on auto and backlight I leave off stream you might have to play around a little bit depends on the speed of your network I changed the frames per second to 15 frames per second everything else I left on default detection alarm you click on setup and then you decide which area it should detect so you want to exclude a small area you use the pen and then just exclude that small area if you want to exclude everything and just keep a small area like where the people would have their face or something I would go and click on this icon here and then use the eraser and it will detect only the motion in this area audio and light I leave audio on because sometimes delivery guys talking to themselves the IR lights, your infrared lights, I leave on auto. Info gives you just some info about the camera. Now we're moving on to surveillance. Click on record, override, pre-motion setting, and the time for your pre-motion setting. I have it for 15 seconds before a motion is detected. Schedule, enable recording. Here you can set a schedule if you don't want it every day or want to exclude some hours. You can do that here. This camera can detect persons. I don't know how accurate it is. I did not try that yet because I always record any motion. Moving on. You can be notified by email. Here are your email settings. Unless you know them, you can get them from your email provider. FTP settings. I use FTP upload. I all upload all my footage to an FTP server, a local FTP server. You should never upload it to a FTP server on the internet. FTP is not a real secure protocol. FTP will send your password and your username in plain text. So it could be catch captured by any network analyzer. So use only an internal FTP server. Also the same here, you can set the time date persons vehicles or any motion push now this has to do with your phone app it can push you a notification to your phone if you have the app running person vehicle or any motion on the network settings you can view the camera settings current settings you can click on setup to change any ip address and so on anything in the network when you click advanced you see even more information what you can change or adjust to your liking on the storage you see now the sd card when you click on it you have the option to format mount and unmount the sd card i would go in and format it once in a while on the system you have your user management here you can add additional users if you like to then your date and time settings on the maintenance you have the options to save your configuration that would be good if you make changes and you want to reverse them just select the folder on your hard drive and you can save it there Auto upgrade will automatically upgrade your firmware when a new one is available. Next, you can check down here if there's an update available. If there's one available, you can download it. And here we can set up an auto reboot. So you can select a day when the camera has to reboot. I would suggest schedule this with you local friendly burglar so he is not around when the camera reboots 
because you won't have any footage of it. It takes only about a minute, but this minute or two, you won't have any footage. When you take a look here, between the 410 and the 510, there have different aspect ratios. As you can see here, the 510 captures also some of the street, not only my driveway. That's it for the 510WA. Next time we will move the 410W 120 to 150 feet away from the router on the back garage. It's supposed to make 160 some feet according to specification and we will see how it works out. Please give this video a like, it really helps me out. Subscribe to my channel if you're not a subscriber and then turn on that notification bell so you get notified when I post the next video. Until then, have a great week.